Welcome to a lesson on integration using substitution. In this lesson we focus on definite integration. The substitution method is helpful when integrating composite functions. By performing substitution and using a change of variables, we're able to simplify the integral, which allows us to use a basic integration formula in order to find the antiderivative. If you haven't watched the previous lesson, you may want to review these six steps. One of the more important things to remember is that in general, we let u equal the inner function of the composite function or the quantity raised to a power. Let's look at our first example. Notice here we have natural log x raised to the fourth, so we'll try letting u equal natural log x. The next step is to find differential u, where differential u is equal to the derivative of natural log x with respect to x times dx, which would be one over x dx. And now let's analyze the integral. Because u is equal to natural log x, we can write this piece as u to the fourth, which leaves a denominator of x in our dx, which is equivalent to one over x dx. And one over x dx is exactly equal to differential u. So notice here we have a perfect match with differential u. This is not always the case. Sometimes we have to manipulate this equation here to make it match the integral. And now for the next step, we want to write this in terms of u. So we'd have the integral of, this would be u to the fourth, and again, one over x dx is equal to differential u. We have to be careful about the limits of integration. The limits of integration from two to four are for x, not u. So one approach would be to make sure we identify the limits of integration from x equals two to x equals four. So to use these limits of integration, we'll find the antiderivative in terms of u, write it back in terms of x, and then evaluate using these limits of integration. This is the approach we're going to take, but I do want to show there's another method. We could write the limits of integration in terms of u. Notice that when x is two, u is natural log two. We could use this as our lower limit of integration, and when x is four, u is equal to natural log four. So if we keep the antiderivative in terms of u, we could evaluate the integral using these limits of integration. If we keep them in terms of x from two to four, we need to find the antiderivative in terms of x. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll go ahead and find the antiderivative in terms of x to evaluate the definite integral. So next we would have the antiderivative in terms of u would be u to the fifth divided by five from x equals two to x equals four. And in some of my other videos, I'll leave the limits of integration off until the antiderivative is in terms of x. So now with this in terms of x, we'd have one fifth, and then u to the fifth would be natural log x to the fifth. Now we can evaluate this using the x values of four and two. Before we do this though, notice how if we use these limits of integration, we can go ahead and leave it in the form of u to the fifth divided by five and evaluate it, and evaluate this using natural log two and natural log four. But we'll evaluate it in terms of x. So when we do this, we'd have one fifth, and then when x is four, we have natural log four to the fifth minus, when x is two, we have natural log two to the fifth. And now we'll get a decimal approximation using the calculator. So we have one fifth, or one divided by five, and then in parentheses, we have natural log four to the fifth, right arrow, minus, in parentheses, natural log two to the fifth, right arrow, close parenthesis, and enter. To four decimal places, we have approximately 0 0.9920. Now because we have a definite integral, we can check this on the graphing calculator. So we press math, and then option nine, or we can arrow down to nine, enter. We're integrating from two to four, so two right arrow, four right arrow, now we enter the integrand function, so in parentheses we have natural log x to the fourth, right arrow divided by x, 
right arrow, and then X for DX. Enter. Verifying our answer is correct. Let's look at a second example. Let's first write the square root using a rational exponent where the index is two and we have the quantity one minus x squared to the first. So we can write this as the integral of x times the quantity one minus x squared to the one half power integrated from zero to one. And because we have one minus x squared to the one half, we'll let u equal one minus x squared and therefore differential u is equal to the derivative of one minus x squared is negative two x and then times dx. Now let's analyze the integral. So we have u equals one minus x squared. So this can be written as u to the one half. We're left with x dx. Notice that here we have du equals negative two x dx. So let's go ahead and solve this for x dx so it matches by dividing both sides by negative two. Simplifying, we have negative one-half du equals x dx. So now we can substitute negative one-half du for x dx. Writing in terms of u, we would have u to the one-half, and then x dx is equal to negative one-half du, so let's factor out the negative one-half, and then we have du. The limits of integration in terms of x are from x equals zero to x equals one. So we'll find the antiderivative in terms of u, write it in terms of x, and use these limits of integration. As I showed before, sometimes you'll see it written as the same integral where you can find the new limits of integration in terms of u, and then evaluate using the antiderivative in terms of u. Notice when x is zero, u would be one minus zero squared or one, and when x is one, u is equal to one minus one squared or zero. We're not gonna do it this way. We'll find the antiderivative in terms of x and use these limits of integration. I think I mentioned before in some of my other videos, I leave the limits of integration off until we have the antiderivative in terms of x. So here we'd have negative one half times the antiderivative of u to the one half would be u to the one half plus one, that's u to the three halves, divided by three halves. Let's simplify one more time before writing this in terms of x. So we would have negative one half, dividing by three halves is the same as times two thirds. Now let's write this in terms of x. So we'd have, this would be negative one third, and then u is equal to one minus x squared, so we'd have the quantity one minus x squared to the three halves. And now we can evaluate this using limits of integration from zero to one. When x is one, we'd have negative one third times, this would be one minus one squared to the three halves, that's zero to the three halves, minus when x is zero, we would have one to the three halves, Simplifying, we have negative one-third times negative one, which equals positive one-third. Now let's go ahead and check this on the graphing calculator. So we'll press math, and then number nine, integrating from zero to one, so zero, right arrow, one, right arrow. The integrand function is x times the square root of one minus x squared right arrow, right arrow, and then x for dx. Enter. The calculator does have some error here. We need to recognize this is point three repeating, and therefore this is equal to one-third. Verifying our answer is correct. I hope you found this helpful.